All right, everybody, let's talk about Bring Me the Horizon being canceled, but plot twist, plot twist. This is an old fashioned canceling, <laughs> not like most of the cancelings these days, which is when blue haired weirdos on Twitter get upset because somebody said the wrong thing or whatever. Um, plot twist. This is an old fashioned canceling where Christian conservatives are mad at the metal band for uh, being blasphemous. I, I thought we were past these days because sadly I am old enough to remember back in the eighties, the satanic panic when everyone accused whatever, like wasp and Judas priest and whatnot of being satanists, which they weren't. Everyone accused them of being satanists and starting cults that made their kids, you know, turn gay or whatever it is that they accused them of. I thought we were past those days, uh, but here we are. <laughs> A good old fashioned uh, Christian moral panic. And so what happened is this. This is an announcement for their new tour or show or whatever it is in Australia, I guess. The flyer says a post-human study phase two, if Jesus Christ returns, well, just kill that effort twice. So obviously our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son to cleanse you of your sins. And did you ever say a word of thanks to him for that? God's like, wow, so I loved you so much that I let you kill my son. And and these are the thanks I get. You guys have drag shows. Boys have long hair and girls have short hair. I killed my son for you. And these are the thanks I get. <laughs> I mean, all things considered, like, I don't know. I saw this flyer and I didn't think anything of it other than Dane is opening for a metal show, which I thought was cool because Dane is from Australia, I think, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Dane's opening. It did not occur to me for a moment to be upset about it, but there are lots of people who were, surprisingly. So lots of people on Twitter upset about this. As a Christian, I find this deeply, deeply your own free will and right to artistic freedom. Uh, some Christians taking it well, but a lot of Christians not taking it so well. So this person said, tell me how to lose a fan base without telling me how to lose a fan base. I guess implying that somehow Bring the Horizon had a large Christian fan base, which I'm not so sure that was the case. This person said, uh, goodbye, Christ is king. <laughs> I like that. You guys remember that woman from, I think it was Wife Swap. She's like, she's not a Christian. She's not a Christian. <laughs> That's what I imagine this person. <laughs> Goodbye, Christ is King. Announcing their departure. I like that. A lot of main character energy right there. This was my most anticipated album of the year. Listen to the singles on loop. Practically nonstop. Not anymore. Christ is King. Yeah, you're off my playlist. Oh, no. What will they do without DPR, the Doomer Trooper? What will they do without his support? Judith said, I'm never listening to you guys again. Disrespectful, distasteful. And when he with a capital H does come back, you're going to be in for a very hard lesson. Dare you to target a different religion. So I'd like to see that when Jesus comes back, he's like, uh, that's right. MFers. I'm back. Ollie Sykes. Where you at, buddy? Where you at? He's going to call out Ollie Sykes. And all these going to be real quiet. He's going to be like, bro, no, it was just a prank, bro. It was just a prank. Come on. It's just like a tour flyer. No, no, don't cast me into everlasting fire. No, don't do it. <laughs> this was my favorite one here, though. I have no idea who this person is, but uh, very interesting. Let's watch this video. This girl's wild. Let's listen to this. This is what she had to say. Melanie Mack. I don't know who this person is. Don't care if they've always been this way. This is the first time I've seen anything this egregious from Bring Me the Horizon and I'm done. All songs removed from my playlist. Let's check it out. So Bring Me the Horizon made an extremely blasphemous tweet last night at like 2 a.m. Now I already know this band is atheist and I know they're against religion and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, whatever. I still listened to them, wasn't a huge deal what a band's personal beliefs are. But in this case, and in this outright blasphemy, can't do it. I took them off of all of my can't playlists. Let me just read it to you and I'll continue. Anyway, so they were announcing their tour You can hear here, the Christ in her voice. Said, you sure Jesus can. If Christ returns, we'll just unalive that effer two times. 
I saw that. Y'all. I was done. Their new album has been my most anticipated album of the year. I have been listening to their singles on loop nonstop practically since they dropped them. But I am done. I don't even care anymore. People can call me soft. They can say this, that, or the other. But I will not stand for outright blasphemy against Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Now, at first, I was like, okay, uh, I think I like this girl. She looks like an OnlyFans baddie. But uh, in her bio here, it says uh, that she's a Jesus freak. I was like, wait a minute. This girl is is based. But then I looked into it a little bit more closely. Uh, <laughs> and I was like... Uh, I don't know about this. Uh, for example, she retweeted this here from Libs of TikTok. Climate change is now transphobic, homophobic, racist, and xenophobic. And she quote tweeted it saying, wow, climate change sounds like a cool guy. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. And then uh, she got in a little bit of trouble here for using the gay F word. Uh, and I'm not on board with that. Not on board with that. And then I found her YouTube channel, which is absolutely amazing. Her YouTube channel is basically if the critical drinker was like an OnlyFans girl. This is my favorite one of her videos that I found. This is amazing. Um, <laughs> Pride Church gets smited in Boston. Right? A church in Massachusetts gets smited to the ground hours after a Pride celebration. God will not be mocked so here is the tweet in question taylor day she made this she said a church in massachusetts gets the sodom and gomorrah treatment hours after pride month celebration and then i quote tweeted it and said blasphemous church so yeah these are the kind of people that seem to be extra mad at bring me the horizon with that being said i do think they have a couple of valid points as a christian this hard, edgy stuff is cringy and stupid. To be fair, it's kind of frustrating that we're the only religious group that it's okay to act like this towards. Imagine if they said something about Muhammad. I know these people making fun of the outrage would be joining. I have no problem with people making fun of Jesus because I know my faith. I just want consistency. If it's okay to make fun of one, it's okay to make fun of all. And I actually completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. Um, for whatever reason, we've decided that it's totally okay to just say the most like deliberately offensive rude shit about christians but if you were to do the same thing about you know muslims or any other religion well then you'd be a horrible bigot right and again like he said i think that's totally fair like if you're going to be a blasphemous dick to christians then you should also be a blasphemous dick to muslims right i'd like to see some consistency they made fun of muslims and arabs endlessly in media look at every brown guy in film and tv for 100 years that's true that's a good point but not in the current moment in the current moment, you're not allowed to. To be fair, I'm not suggesting that that it was cool that they had all those like racist caricatures of like Indians and Muslims back in the 80s because that wasn't cool either. Didn't Jesus go into a church and beat everyone with a stick when they turned it away from worship? I hope so. He should. That's what I would do if I was Jesus. I was like, y'all motherfuckers need some Jesus in your life. Signed, Jesus. And then I'd, go to, I'd fucking beat all those motherfuckers. Here's what I think is interesting. My main question is like, where did these people come from? And like, there's lots of them. There's lots of them. I'll be blocking y'all and everything and removing your music off the playlist. Bummer. Also, when, not if, Christ returns, you best be ready to bow down because the only thing you'll fear is fear with that attitude. It won't end well for you. Yeah, Jesus went Mark Wahlberg on him. That's right. Where did these people come from and how did they get into metal? That's my question because like the idea of like metal being sort of into like blasphemous occult imagery is not exactly a new thing. I mean, this is like the first Motley Crue song from like 1981, I think, you know, with like flaming pentagrams and stuff like that. And then we had Marilyn Manson and all kinds of stuff, you know, in the 90s. Like it's very odd to me. Like, how did this happen? I'm genuinely confused. Who are these people and how did they get into like metal? If you want to call Bring Me the Horizon metal, which I mean, I suppose they debatably are. Um, where did these people come from? This is not new. I would like to know what they would think of this, of, of Have a Hedge. This is what I want to know. By the way, I really want somebody to do a trap remix of this song. This is uh, Dethrone the Son of God by Have a Hedge from back in 1993. One of my favorite black metal songs of all time. I want to know what they'd think of this one. Rap the sacred flesh, sodomize the holy asshole, masturbation. 
on the dead body. Oh, Christ. Someone needs to do a trap remix of this. That's what I think. I think the world's ready for it. In all seriousness, I'm like genuinely baffled. I remember, you know, during the peak of like Christian metal, you know, or Christian metalcore, whatever, being popular, which I would say is probably from like 2005 to 2012 or something like that, right? When all the like Warp Tour Christian stuff, I mean, like Paramore was a Christian band and Under Oath hitting the Billboard Top 10 and all that kind of stuff. I mean, like that was the peak of Christian metal. That stuff was like legitimately hugely popular, even in the alternative music scene. And I don't remember any of those people ever getting mad that there were bands using blasphemous imagery. I mean, there are Christian bands that would play, you know, Warp Tour or whatever with, I don't know, fill in the blank bands making all kinds of like edgy, offensive jokes about Christianity. And they didn't care. They were just like, hey, you know, whatever. I think they understood that it, it, it wasn't actually bands intending to be blasphemous. It's basically just them saying like edgy shit because that's what people in bands do. So I'm very confused, legitimately confused about where this new wave of like Christian outrage is coming from. It's very interesting. I never thought I would see this again, especially because we live in a world where, you know, stuff like WAP, I feel like after WAP was the biggest song of the year, how could anyone ever be offended again by anything? <laughs> you know? Yeah, the anti counter it, it could be, it could be true that the pendulum has swung and maybe people are fed up with all the, you know, moral relativism and just like all the like woke shit that's been going on for the past 10 years. And I'm not, I'm not saying that being woke is good or bad or whatever. I'm just saying like, it's possible that, you know, all the progressivism that has been so prevalent in popular culture for the past 10 years or so that, uh, yeah, more modern culture is no morality. So now counterculture is to be moral. I think that might be it. I think that might actually be it, like in all seriousness. And that's not me, you know, making a personal judgment about what is or isn't moral, but certainly popular culture of the last 10 years in particular has not been consistent with any sort of like traditional Christian culture, right? So maybe it is just that like, well, if it's mainstream now to, you know, be the opposite of Christian and I want to rebel, then maybe, maybe I'll be Christian. Um, I, I don't know. It's superficial and biased morality. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. I don't think these are like deeply thoughtful people or something like that, but it is kind of interesting. I mean, just very surprising to see. I never thought that in the year of our Lord 2024 that I would see people getting angry at a band making like clearly, you know, just an edgy joke about Jesus on their tour flyer. Uh... <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? History truly is cyclical. Yeah. Imagine being so God fearing that you white knight for Jesus on Twitter. Listen, he might notice. He might notice. He might be like, okay, um, Johnny from South Carolina, I see you getting offended on my behalf about this Bring Me the Horizon tour. I see you. And listen, I also saw you jerk off to uh, Charlotte Sartre on Pornhub three times last week. Oh, you think I didn't notice that? Oh, I noticed. Remember, I'm I'm the son of God. I see, I see you, I see you. I got eyes on you, buddy. I saw you jerking off to her. But since you came to my defense on Twitter with the Bring Me the Horizon thing, I'm just gonna forget that one. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend that you didn't, just pretend that you didn't jerk it to Charlotte. And we'll just pretend that this never happened. So thank you. Gives you a little fist bump from heaven. If I was Jesus, that would be my reaction. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. There's one or two things that will happen here. Either this will be a one day Twitter outrage that goes away and nobody cares about it ever again. Or number two, this will end up being a bigger thing that will make Bring Me the Horizon more famous than ever because without exception, every single time, every single time that Christians try to cancel something, it makes it more popular. And this is actually true of leftists also. Like, any t here's the thing. Here's the thing! If you want to cancel something, just ignore it. Just ignore it. Because without exception, whether it's Christians or whether it's leftists, any time you try to cancel something, it makes it more popular. So if you don't like something, the best thing you can do is just ignore it. That's the move. So, yeah, we'll see. But uh, starting today, as of April 23rd, 2024, Bring the Horizon officially canceled. You heard it here first.
Come on, it's just like a tour flyer. No, no, don't cast me into everlasting fire. No, don't do it. 